Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test and immediately welcome to my basement. A little bit different content for you guys right now and I'm sure it's a little different for everybody because frankly, I'm not with my team. I'm actually in my basement and feeling a little nostalgic because I'm used to waking up every morning working with some of the coolest people in the world. But I didn't want this time to go to waste and you guys have been a huge inspiration to me uh, seeing how you're engaging with your family. But I've been looking online and seeing a lot of people kind of tapping back to some of their favorite airplanes. I thought, you know what? Now would be a really good time to do that as well. I'm gonna actually go into the past and I'm gonna build an airplane that is one of my favorites, frankly. The plane I'm gonna be building today is the FT Mighty Mini Scout. I actually have a laser in the garage where I use for prototyping, so let's go ahead and, uh, and cut one out and share some stories. So a lot of people probably think that I'm designing airplanes during the main part of the day, but the reality is, is there's so many other busy things with content. Most of the time that we're designing, we're cutting, and we're even we're doing parts of the episode, it's done right here from my house. Now this is actually the oldest laser that we have. Um, actually, I should say the second oldest. The first one caught on fire. There's one. Here's one. Get the other one, Twick. Where's the other one? It's on the door. On the door? Oh. Get out of there. This is pretty bad, Alex. Long story short, I have a laser here in my house and this is where I can come up with an idea in the middle of the night. I can come out and I can cut it out and I can build it. And oftentimes that's where most of the ideas come from. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back into the old files. I'm gonna find our Mighty Mini Scout. There's the Simple Scout. Oh yeah, oh yeah dude! Mini Triplane, Mini SE5. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. Mini Sportster. There we are. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. I'm still flying. Nice job. Mini cruiser. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you're going to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good plants. There it is. Mini Scout right there. Do you have your potato gun, Mike? I missed the tree. And we've actually used this in episodes before uh, where I blew a wing off of a Bixler trying to get it out of a tree. You sure? Well, I'll, let, I'll let the psycho do it. Nice. Ooh. Well, the wing's gone. Well, there's gonna be less resistance now. <laughs> the football method might work. <laughs> now, the one thing that was a vision behind this is I wanted the Mighty Mini series mainly to be built out of one 20 inch by 30 inch sheet of foam. That way for one buck, you could download the free plans and you could build a whole beautiful flying airplane. It's not just the Mini Scout, but it's also the Mini Speedster and also the Mini Mustang and the Mini Corsair that are like this. So uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try start on our wings and get it built. I gotta remember how to build this now. I just realized it's been a while since I built this plane. <laughs> All right, we'll figure it out. I think there's little pieces here. All right, I'm just gonna roll with it. You're gonna hear that noise a lot, and I'm not gonna lie, that's our toilet. So the Mighty Mini Scout came out of the need of making a swappable that was smaller, but also capable of the fly in people's backyards. One of the feedbacks we got was a lot of people really enjoyed the swappable series, but they still had to kind of travel somewhere where they could fly. Also with the cold weather coming, we realized really quickly we had to have an airplane that could be flown indoors uh, for people to be able to fly like at gymnasiums and basketball courts. And some of our favorite events like uh, NEF JR Indoor Flying Event, which was like a staple every year since I was a young kid. So we quickly designed the, uh, the Scout to kind of meet those requirements. I couldn't remember the date of when the Scout came around. You're not gonna believe this, it was November 3rd, 2014. So this was right around the three year mark of when uh, Flight Test actually became reality. Holy cow, 2014, who'd have thought? So it's been around a lot, but one of the really cool things is when I went back and watched that video, how much everybody has changed. You had, I believe, Alex before he was married with kids. You had Peter Schriepel, you had Josh Scott, and the reason we called them Mighty Minis is we actually had Josh Scott flying these, and we flew these indoors at his church that he worked at. <laughs> and we were hitting everything. We wanted to see that, you know, how it would do, but we also didn't have the weather to be able to fly it outside. So we had to fly it indoors. It definitely was a testimony to the strength that it had that it handled it so well. Now, something I really love about the uh, Mighty Mini that kind of makes it a go-to plane for me is it was only a three channel. In other words, it only had rudder, elevator, and throttle. 
The way that it was able to turn so nicely was it had something called dihedral, and this is what dihedral is. Basically, the low wing creates more lift than the high wing when you have this bend in it. Uh, this gave us the ability to just have a rudder and elevator, and it would still turn nice and coordinated. But even because of that, it was still incredibly maneuverable, whether it was outside or inside. So we oftentimes found ourselves putting little mini FPV setups. And our friend Peter, when he came on the team, was so innovative. He would come with these crazy projects, on like how to make a custom mini FPV pod out of parts that you would order on uh, online. Because back then, they didn't have the FXT805 or these little tiny whoop cameras. You had to make it yourself, sometimes right down to the antenna. And uh, Peter came on the team and it was really cool and he showed us exactly how we could do that. All right, our wing is done. Let's go ahead and get the fuselage done. I want to be able to fly this tonight. Seeing the projects that you guys are sharing uh, during your quarantine time, you know, with each other. And also, more importantly, what you're doing as families has just truly been an inspiration to me and my family as well. I'm really blessed because I get to work with my son, my wife, my other son, and a great team at the shop. They're kind of my extended family. But the fact that I get to still wake up in the morning and come down into the basement and build something uh, it is really special. I guess we're, let's get the elevator on and then we'll do our control surfaces. I got to cut out a turtle deck for it. All right, there's that. Let's get the elevator. All right, while Josh is over at his house building, I'm over here in my bunker just chilling. And I thought I'd take this time to tell you guys about our sponsor for this video, and that is our friends over at Raycon. Now, if you guys don't know what Raycon is, Raycon is one of the hottest, coolest little wireless Bluetooth earbuds on the market. So now, first and foremost, the coolest thing about these earbuds is they're gonna start off at about half the price of normal wireless earbuds, and they sound good. They sound just as good as some of the other competitors on the market. And beyond that, if you've never experienced wireless earbuds before, you're in for a real treat. This is a game changer. I've been carrying around my wireless earbuds ever since the day I bought them in my back pocket. They always come in handy when I'm going on walks or even now, like when I'm working from home, they're Bluetooth. So you can pair them to your phone, but you can also pair them to any other Bluetooth device like my editing machine, for example. Best part about these is they're rechargeable, obviously. Each charge is gonna last you about six hours of listening time. Now, the coolest thing about this is this one particularly, this little case that they come in, it actually charges the battery. There's an internal battery inside the case. So these ones that I have right here are the Everyday E25s, and these ones actually happen to be their most popular model. They're extremely affordable, but the cool thing is, like I said earlier, the sound is great. It has really good bass, and it's super simple and seamless to set up with the Bluetooth. Here's the best thing about all of this, especially for those of you out there who haven't ever experienced wireless earbuds. You can check our link below. It's buyraycon.com slash flight test, and you can actually get 15% off of your new Raycon wireless earbuds. And huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring these videos. It's because of them that we're able to keep making content through this challenging time. And it's also thanks to you guys out there for watching. We cannot be grateful enough. And let's get back to the Bixler, see how they're doing on this build. The year that the Mighty Mini came out, uh, we went to a lot of indoor flying events and it was really cool because at the JR indoor flying event, uh, the first year these came out, the idea of a non like uh, Hobbyco or Horizon Mini that wasn't balsa or wasn't flat out was kind of like not really, not really common. And suddenly there was a swappable series that was a mini size that was durable, that had long flight times, and it just took off like crazy to where we had people scratch building them and buying kits left and right. And it would just be all these little mini speedsters and sportsters flying around uh, with the other airplanes. And people could just fly them for 10 or 12 minutes at a time. And they were slow enough to be able to be easily flown indoors, but they were substantial enough to be able to handle outdoors. And it was just a really special time to uh, kind of, everyone had their favorite little Mighty Mini, you know, in their arsenal. Matter of fact, I think Alex's favorite Mighty Mini is the Mini Mustang. We're really close here. <laughs> and uh, one year, I think it was like maybe two years ago before we moved to Edgewater, he had this mini Mustang and his goal in life was to make it go through the whole entire summer. And no matter how many times he kept crashing over and over and over again, he kept taping it. Whoa! <laughs> oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh no, the turtle deck's falling off! <laughs> to where finally like the torque of the motor would move the nose back and forth. But he kept flying it and stuff. And I'm the kind of guy like, I get a wrinkle. I'm like, oh, I'll just build another wing. Alex would be like, no, no, no. I'm gonna tape it up again and again. And Actually, Josh walked by and he saw me working on it. He said, you bringing it back? And I said, it's never gone anywhere. It's never left. <laughs> it's been here the whole time. <laughs> oh. oh, man. High speed gate challenge. Yep. 
faster you go, the better it is. <laughs> he made it last through the whole entire summer. It's pretty incredible. All right, I think we have all the pieces ready. I need to get some electronics to put the electronics in here. <laughs> Look how little everything is. This is awesome. After building giant stuff for so long, <sighs> it's so nice. To go it's back so it's so satisfying. I mean, I know we have the Beaver and the Adventure, so I'm used to small airplanes. But for some reason, I just feel like a giant right now. No, do you even remember much? Because you let's see, that's. You're 18 now, so five plus years, almost six years ago, that would have put you 12, really yeah. solidly 12 years old. I definitely remember it. I remember going a bunch of places and flying a bunch of planes. Yeah. I don't remember the details. You're, I think there was probably about a six month time where I don't think we went home before like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but you guys would do homeschooling and then we would either get pizza or Jen would bring in food and then we would uh, work till the night uh, manufacturing and then we'd wake up again and go in and oh, yeah. it was kind of crazy because it wasn't just our family. It was Alex's wonderful wife, uh, Lindsay worked with us, Austin's wife, Anna, who's so cool, worked with us and Stefan's wife worked with us. All three of them, all of our wives had a, a certain time where they helped us grow flight test and I think during this time was kind of like in the in the middle of that. Oh yeah. I feel like we're on the home stretch. We have we've been in this maybe 30 minutes. Uh, we even used the mini scout as a uh, tool to do touch and goes and landings on his flying heli carrier and uh, the mini scout was probably one of the easiest planes to be able to kind of kick around and fly and that heli carrier was anything from stable. It would buck and pitch and change and yaw. Uh, Peter did an amazing job flying it, but I, all I can remember is wearing the goggles trying to land on this thing, hoping that we don't get chopped up and hit the motor stool. All right, I'm on you, Josh. You going in for a landing? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. You got yeah! it? Nice. <laughs> we got it. Get it? We yeah. got it. Nice. All right, I'm gonna come in for a landing too. And even when we were flying, there was a couple times that I did get smacked pretty hard. All right, here we go. All right, hold it still as best as I can. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy cow. I did a, I did a touch and go. You know, luckily it didn't didn't destroy anything too badly. Uh, if you're looking to teach your kids how to fly and you want to get them in a hobby and maybe just get them like their first experience of an awesome little airplane, this is definitely one that I would recommend starting them out with. Um, because it's three channel, uh, pretty much anyone can fly it. And then also, it's so slow and maneuverable. Because it's so light and, and just built really stocky, the word Mighty Mini wasn't an accident. This thing can take a hit over and over and over again. Got our power pot all built here. I went ahead and bound up the radios really quick. There we go. That looks cute. All right, be right there. Just putting this landing gear on and we're done. All right, so the Scout's pretty much done here. I got my landing gear on. One final little touch here is I want to fly as if I'm in the cockpit. So I got this little FXT 805 camera and I'm going to use this popsicle stick to kind of get me elevated to the exact height that I want to be at so I can see over the nose, but it still feels like I'm actually inside the airplane. The next step I think we need to do is we need to take this out in our backyard and fly it. Maybe give you a little bit of a tour of our backyard and also the neighbor's backyards while we're at it. All right, friends, we are ready to go. And by the way, you've been in my basement. Now you're going to be in my backyard here. We're going to go ahead and use this little FT Mini Scout to explore the backyard. Now Noah's over there. He's going to be filming from the ground to the air and he's also going to be my recovery tool because one thing I'm not very good at is standing there very long when I start pushing the limits. So my goal is to take you around the backyard here, give you a little bit of tour, but also share the fun that you guys can have in your own backyard. All right, you ready? Mr. Noah? All right, let's, do you think I can get off the ground here? I think so. Okay, let's try it. So good signal. This is pretty gutsy. <laughs> These things generally fly so good. All right, I got a big old tree in front of me and I am recording. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I don't hit anyone. Oh, <laughs> oh she flies just like I remember. All right, so we moved here about seven years ago, I wanna say, and we have been just slowly making this place more and more our home with crazy weird projects. Matter of fact, if you look over to your left over here, you're gonna see one of our more recent projects and that's a huge mountain of pallets. Those pallets are there because uh, Noah's gonna be working on his room doing a pallet wall. At Edgewater, we've really fallen in love with pallet work and the idea of uh, using pallets for everything from furniture to decoration. And now we're doing that at our own house. This flies so nice and smooth. What a beautiful day for this. 
All right, what do you guys say we, uh, we go explore here? One of my favorite lines to fly with the Nano Goblin is right under these trees right here. Let's see if we can keep good enough signal. There it is! <laughs> So we have the coolest neighbors around here. They are so cool about me flying in their side yard. This is my neighbor's uh, property and I love getting the kind of buzz around here. Let's see if we can come around. There it is. <laughs> it's kind of neat with a small airplane you can make every, uh, every location kind of just a wonderland to explore. So one thing I really love about the Mighty Minis is they just fly for such a great long time. Yeah, let's go give Noah a buzz here. Woo! With that big old uh, nose in front of us, it's also really easy to kind of line up on what you want to fly by. Let's dive bomb the house. Oh no! <laughs> oh! We got the ball. <laughs> oh, the stinky, stinky water! <laughs> oh, I almost made it through. I didn't see the. I didn't see it. <laughs> well, at least it's water resistant foam. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just pull on the ground, take off. <laughs> ah! Actually, all looks remarkably dry. I would say just keep on flying. Mm, that's probably not a good sign. Well, it's still running. What do you think? I say. Oh, that is so disgusting. All right. So I pushed it too quickly, too fast, and I landed in our green, stinky, stinky swimming pool that still hasn't been opened yet. But everything's still working. So. What do you think, Noah? I say round two. <laughs> do we go for it? Round two? Oh, that looks gross. Well, <laughs> that is just nasty. All right, let's see what happens. You ready? Yep. <laughs> it still flies! <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, what, what better way to dry it out? <laughs> Friends, I want to sincerely thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. And even though we can't get together right now and everyone's kind of closed in, I hope you guys use this opportunity to connect with each other, connect with your loved ones, and maybe build an airplane and share memory along the way. I miss you guys, we love you guys, and we truly wish you all the best safety and happiness as you guys use this time to hopefully do something special. Uh, from the Flight Test family to you guys, we truly wish you the best, all the health and safety. And as you guys spend time with each other and make some memories, please consider doing something creative like building an airplane, sharing a laugh, sharing a memory. Thanks for being part of the family. We'll see you next time.